Hi, my name is Alex Spencer, and this is a tutorial for Tuts Plus. In my mind, exploring the System Preferences section should be job one of every Mac user. These menus contain a plethora of essential security, privacy, and family-friendly settings that should be set up as soon as you pull your Mac out of the box. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use and set the following preference panes. Users and Groups, Parental Controls, as well as Security and Privacy. Let's get started! Whether it is just for a moment or on a more continuous basis, at some point in time you will be asked to share your Mac with someone else. Having alternate arrangements in place ensures your personal settings and information are protected. The first scenario I will show you is great for those one-off occasions when someone needs to use your computer for a short amount of time, but there is no real need for long-term sharing. From System Preferences, click on Users and Groups. Then unlock the pane by clicking the icon on the bottom left part of the screen. Enter your administrator password to complete the unlock. Please note you may have to repeat these unlock steps for each system preference pane we cover in this tutorial. Once the pane is unlocked, click the guest user on the sidebar. Check the box next to allow guest users to log into this computer. We will go over the parental controls later on in this tutorial, but for now, just know that you can access it here and they can be enabled or disabled for the guest user with this checkbox. Now, if a friend or family member needs to borrow our computer for a bit, they can log into the guest account. Not only is it password free and therefore easy to access, but when they sign out, all of the information and files from the home folder will be removed. Not to mention they won't be able to snoop on any of the files in your folders. If you'll be sharing your Mac on a more ongoing basis, then you'll want to create an actual user account for each person using it. To do this, move your mouse button underneath the sidebar and click the plus button. Select a group that you would like to add the user to and finish filling out the form with their name, username, and password. I'm going to do this very quickly through the magic of editing. And there you go. I can create a new user simply by clicking the Create User button. By creating the separate user, they each will now have their own set of login credentials as well as having their own set of files, folders, and personal settings. Everyone just needs to remember to log out of the computer when they're done using it. As you add more and more users to this computer, the need to control how the computer is being used or what it is accessing will quickly become clear. For some users, the use of parental controls may come in handy. Go back to the System Preferences menu and then choose Parental Controls. Make sure the Parental Control pane is unlocked and if not, go ahead and click the lock and enter in your administrator password. Once the pane is unlocked, you'll be presented with a list of users that you can assign parental controls to. You can limit access based on applications, the internet, people, time limits, or other devices that are attached to the computer. The list of controls you can enable or disable here are grand. Thankfully, they all come with their own explanation, so I won't be going over each and every one. I would recommend, however, disabling the built-in camera and making sure that you set a limit on the applications that can and cannot be used, as well as possibly dealing with anything from the web or emails from certain people. Remember, you can also set time limits as to when the computer can be used, which can be very, very powerful as well. Now that you've set up a secure and easy process for your computer to be shared amongst multiple people, I want to show you how to keep the rest of the world out. Most of that will be done in the Security and Privacy menu from within System Preferences. The Security and Privacy Preferences are broken down into four tabs. I'll walk you through each one now, starting with General. Here in the General tab, you can reset your password, require a password immediately after coming out of Sleep or Screensaver, show a message when the screen is locked, disable automatic logins, and set your computer up to only allow apps from the Apple App Store or from anywhere on the internet. You also might want to take a second to unlock this pane if it isn't already done for you. Now let's move on to File Vault. File Vault is a must use if you keep any personal data on your computer. If someone were to snatch your computer and remove its hard drive, you would be able to rest a bit easier knowing that your data was encrypted. File Vault encrypts your data with XTS AES128 encryption. The initial encryption is fast and unobtrusive, so you won't have to worry about it slowing down your productivity either. To enable File Vault, simply click Turn on File Vault. Choose the users that need to have their data encrypted and click Continue. You'll be given a recovery key, which is kind of a safety net should you need to unlock or decrypt the data on your computer. Go ahead and note it and then click Continue. You'll also be given the opportunity to store that recovery key with Apple. Whether you choose to do that or not is up to you. I would choose not to, and click Continue. 
Once you've done that, you'll need to restart your computer to go ahead and begin the encryption process. I can't restart my computer while I'm recording, so you'll just have to assume I went ahead and hit restart. Let's move on to firewall. Most residential and commercial routers do a great job of letting good internet traffic in while keeping any bad stuff out. But should you spend a lot of time in coffee shops, airports, or other open wireless networks, turning on a firewall at your computer's level is a great idea. Simply enable the firewall and then choose firewall options. To keep yourself as safe as possible, make sure you just click the box labeled block all incoming connections and then click OK. And lastly, there's the privacy tab. From within this tab, you can control which applications have full access to information like your current location, your contacts, your calendars, your reminders, or even full control over your computer. Go through each one of these tabs and deselect apps that don't need that level of access. Now that you've taken a bit of time to learn more about the user and groups pane, parental controls pane, and security and privacy panes, spending just a few minutes configuring them will equate to a much safer and ultimately better night's sleep for you and anyone with whom you share your computer. Thanks for watching!